Hi, I'm Layla Sturman and with me is Jason Clark. Um, we've been working on a project that we're uh, going to discuss today in machine learning, text summarization, and optimizing scholarship for citizen audiences and discovery. Uh, we worked with our colleagues, Justin Shanks and Daniel Layden, who we are very grateful for their uh, time and expertise on this project. Next slide. So today we're going to discuss the motivation for the research. Then we did a survey to, um, to ground the work that we're doing. And we'll talk about that a bit. And then the meat of the presentation, Jason will talk about summarizing and restructuring scholarship and how we did that and how we thought about it and what data we used. Um, and then we'll briefly discuss the implications and next steps of this research. Next slide. So uh, clear communication outside of disciplinary niches is rarely taught or emphasized in higher education. In fact, we train students in complex jargon as part of their indoctrination into a field. At the same time, interdisciplinary research is a sought after interaction that research offices and institutions believe will increase innovation, productivity, and access to funding. Journal articles and book chapters are the standard efficient means of communicating within a one's field, and yet this static format, disciplinary jargon, and the presumed audience of these scholarly outputs may inhibit some of the common measures of success for those outputs. Measures like high citation rates, successful grant applications, broad readership, and acknowledgement of research are contingent on articles that attract and encourage readership from broad audiences. Next slide. We talk a great deal about the physical access to materials, yet understanding can be a secondary barrier once the document is in hand. If researchers want to have large scale impact, doing the work is not enough. Translation needs to be a further step. There's a reason folks get quoted in national news outlets more than others. Um, they've done the work to be accessible. Next slide. One barrier that limits researchers' potential to be collaborative is the understanding uh, between disciplinary, disciplinary niches. So you may be working on the same type of thing, but using totally different vocabulary to, to explain it, and that really limits uh, cross-disciplinary interaction. Um, the barrier is enforced by a lack of generally understandable language in things that we assume are understandable, like abstracts and summaries. Um, and so we're arguing for a simplified version of those research outputs, um, not that they should be dumbed down or simplified to the detriment, at the detriment of innovation, um, or to be misconstrued as, you know, the news media got a little confused around some of the COVID-19 preprints in early days and what, what that all meant and what a preprint was. Um, but um, if there are secondary outputs uh, that are simplified for a broad audience, that those can actually help the broad reach and the impact of knowledge and work against that kind of journalistic confusion around research. Um, this is not a new concept, but we're taking a new angle um, at solving it, and we think that libraries are well situated to engage in this type of service. Next slide. To get baseline data of the current practices of our faculty at Montana State, um, we developed a survey and we made sure it included gift card incentive, um, which we're, we were glad we'd done when one of our respondents um, said that this was a very challenging survey. So we asked some hard questions. Next slide. Oh, and I will say that the survey questions and responses are available uh, on the slides that CNI is putting out and um, on GitHub with the rest of our documentation. So um, who responded to our survey? Uh, we had 59 respondents out of 105 invitations, which is about 60% response, which we're very happy about. And if you can read this slide, um, we had about uh, a third associate professors, and then a quarter ish each uh, assistant and full professors, and then um, a postdoc and two research appointment professors. 
And we invited researchers very specifically and not a random sample um, across all the tenure home departments on our campus. And then we tried to um, invite scholars at different career stages. So we were really intentional about trying to get a broad understanding of our scholars. Um, we wanted to know what was important to them and where they currently spent their time uh, so that as we developed an automated process, um, we could uh, decrease the time and effort involved in that step of translation and, and really be useful to, to our scholars. Next slide. We found, here's an example of a journal article that'll come back in a little bit, um, that scholars value a broad range of outputs. The journal article is the top. It you know surpasses everything. Um, but in a sort of a second band of important scholarly outputs, we had books, presentations, invited lectures, book chapters, posters, and proceedings. So none of that's surprising. Those are uh, what we expected, but it's good to, to confirm that. Um, when asked about measures of success, we also didn't, we weren't surprised, but we, you know, our, our beliefs were confirmed that um, assistant professors universally said publications, citations, and grant dollars were the measure of success for them. So that, you know, p promotion and tenure is really driving their output. Associate professors um, had those same concerns, but then added uh, the number of their graduate students who had successful careers. Um, and who successfully completed their graduate studies, um, and then some recognition and impact. And then full professors had all those same concerns and added the success of their undergraduate students and their teaching, and then a few more mentions of broad impacts. So they also mentioned intrinsic motivations. Um, so things like a sense of personal satisfaction, a positive impact on people's lives, and being sought out as a mentor. Um, one respondent uh, cut right through it and said, um, Montana State values the number of journal articles and book chapters and grant dollars that I bring in where I value making a difference. Um, while individuals have varied motivation and differ from our university, um, the specter of tenure and promotion continues to be a central driving factor in the dissemination of research. This also drives the venues and objectives of, of that research dissemination. So these outputs are aimed at disciplinary peers. Next slide. And when targeting their intended audiences, they expect to do little more than uh, publish. Uh, as you can see from these quotes, I just expect to find researchers to find my papers. They just assume that they're doing the right thing. Um, we argue that that's not enough. Next slide. Instead of um, just trusting that publishing in a reputable journal will do the work for you, we advocate for translation. We should treat scholarship as a conversation, especially if you think about it in terms of the ACRL information literacy framework. It's important to be speaking the same language to have a fluent conversation. Um, this is, again, an opportunity for libraries to help with this work um, and to provide wider access to the ideas that will benefit further research in the public. Next slide. Lack of translation inhibits both outreach and discovery. Um, as you can see in this quote from one of our respondents, um, they valued the articles and podcasts as uh, increasing the visibility of their, of their work, just to keep up in their disciplinary niche. Next slide. Many of our survey respondents believe that their research has impact or should have impact. Um, and the, there's a specific audience that they'd like to reach. You can look in our survey data and, and see, but you know, they, they, they'd like to reach more than just the 17 people who read the same journal that they publish in, um, but they don't do the work to get there. That work is not valued on the promotion and tenure uh, timeline. It's, it's you know, rarely counted or the it's intangible the connection between that extra translation work and invited speaking um, uh, roles so um, we can help make that work easier so it's less of a time suck but people still get the benefits um, next slide 
uh, when asked what re impact uh, they think their research has, um, on the left, you can see this is a historian who clearly is very thoughtful and does um, intentional work to reveal the historical roots of current issues, to bring hidden stories to public light, um, and, and really works to, to move their, their work into many spheres. You can see on the right, um, this researcher says, it moves ideas around within whatever academic field it lands in which I honestly don't quite know what it means and um, can assume it's not that effective. So uh, next slide. Um, so when we're looking at that next step, uh, on the left again, um, we have an economist who has a, a suite of people working with them. It's a very well-resourced uh, department and they, you know, they say that they have, um, their research is crafted into a policy brief and disseminated, and then a communication administrator crafts new articles that highlight the topic, and then a, a third uh, layer of other economists present their work to the public. So that's layers of resources that most of us don't have. Um, the reality for many is more, I publish in repeatable journals, and then move on to the next thing, try to get the next grant, write the next paper, teach the next class. Um, so um, we're hoping to help researchers gain the ideal um, without needing to hire three extra people to do the work. Most people can't. Next slide. So um, we're aiming to create a tool that allows entree into the scholarly conversation um, it doesn't replace scholarship, but increases visibility and accessibility across disciplines. Next slide. We're not working in a vacuum. Um, these tools listed here and linked um, help scholars translate, text mine, parse metadata from PDFs, and summarize research. Um, not all are still maintained, but there's information about all of them. Um, and they're all working to enhance the possibilities of the static PDF for human and machine readability. And we're happy to be joining this scholarly conversation. Next slide. Uh, one of the last questions on the survey, um, researchers responded that they were most interested in an abstract that had been translated to provide an accessible and readable summary of your work to the general public. Um, this is no easy task, but important as we've seen. Um, and Jason will now explain how we've been working on that task. Thanks, Layla. So, yeah, in addition to this, there's lots of information, which is which was great for us. A, a general ideas about scholarly communication practices, um, how disciplines are prioritizing what they say or where they're publishing. Um, but we were also able to gain uh, knowledge into where, if they were going to do this work. How might they uh, think about the articles they produce, and where we would where we would look for candidates for summarization or for for the work of building a snapshot article? Uh, and our entry into this was about interdisciplinary translation, like kind of moving because between our domains on campus, allowing communication to happen. But there's even further. We we connected to the idea of snapshots that allow citizens to understand parts of our research and, and the output of the university and kind of keep in keeping close to our our land grant mission so you, the the end of the 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 uh survey had questions like this what what would you prefer with uh, what kind of output if you were to create a snapshot article what would you what would you what would be most beneficial to you if we were to look at your sources the sources of your research where would you have us look um, so applying the research uh, from that survey to these new forms of scholarship, and this is this was really exciting for the team. Um, and really, what we were looking to do is again moving moving from that um, as we prioritize the the journal article, moving from the common expression of the journal German uh, sorry journal article um, to something something else. Um, and our our team was really coming at this as. You know, if you were to think through a sort of source, a seed, a 
seed snapshot article that would eventually lead somebody to or could lead somebody through a DOI or through a, a other other means to the actual research itself, what would be the minimum viable unit for expressing that form of scholarship? And again, we didn't work in a vacuum with this. Uh, Layla mentioned a number of uh, tools that are, are in various stages that I think about this. But um, one of our one of our motivations was to think through that minimum viable expression of scholarship. And for us, that that idea of a nano publication, which I'm, I'm, I have on the screen right now, um, which was really just about um, this was a linked data expression for a, for a, for an article, so you could you could encode an article in 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 a certain way so that it, it had its the the primary assertion, the provenance of the article, and the publication info. And so coming from that mindset um, is really where we started, and that led us into the summarization activity. Uh, we eventually settled on a form of a web scale vocabulary called schema.org uh, that was cre that's created and consumed by a uh, commercial search engine. Um, they have a form of a scholarly article, um, which is part of the markup you're seeing on the screen here. So um, in addition to the, the snapshot, we used markup behind the scenes to identify the different pieces of, of the article, uh, of the journal article itself. Uh, so all of these things, like the idea of a snapshot, what's minimum viable expression of scholarship, and then how do you encode that? We're coming, to, we're converging into this project. And then you get into the, like, how do you script and program summarization? So the machine processes themselves. And I'll give a little time to this part of the conversation. Um, Again, we saw from the, uh, I'll, I'll stay here for a moment. We saw from, from the survey that uh, people saw value, our researchers saw value in summarization and creating different kinds of readability levels for their research. Um, but they also didn't have full resources and always the time. Um, and as Layla pointed to, they, they're not always incentivized to do this, um, the team kind of thought about this as the last last mile um, problem with uh, last mile problem that you hear about with the internet. This was the, the kind of last mile problem that we were thinking about in terms of research scholarship outreach, like communication of the of those concepts from page to person. Um, so there was value here, but and we knew that there were routines that we could introduce, and so that's where these machine processes really um, helped us. Um, move forward with recognizing that value and then the expression of, of that research in a new form. Um, again, we started with, there's always the data mining itself, um, giving, I just wanna give the group a sense of where we started. Um, we wanted STEM, uh, a STEM corpus, and we also wanted some social science and humanities corpus. Uh, so we, we pulled a number of different sources together um, primarily PDFs that we would um, mine and and start this summarization process with. And there was, uh, you know, depending on on sources, some OCR was better than others. If, the, if um, we did sort of cap, uh, it was current research. I think we went through the first. Um, we we stayed within the, like the last five years. Um, and and these were just samples that we weren't trying to be exhaustive of every piece of research that MSU. Montana State University has, has produced in the last five years. It's just, how do we get to this proof of concept? How do we create a snapshot article? So data mining was our first, um, was our first part of the machine process. Um, as far as cleanup, uh, we used the Surmine Java library and uh, all of these scripts, uh, Layla mentioned that um, we have a, a GitHub repository. It's linked at the end of the slides. Um, the scripts are available there so you can see them. Um, this this was a matter of um, taking that, that PDF document and moving it into a textual format that could be used um, to do some of the natural language processing and use some of those um, models to come up with readability and um, different kinds of summarization. <clears throat> So the second piece of this was what I just what I just started to mention, which was like, okay, you have a set of texts, um, you have um, 
the ability to start to look, you have language models that can talk about readability levels or, or evaluate the uh, accessibility of language. Um, you have a, a set of libraries that can start to parse that language and break it apart and understand, rank it in terms of like what are important sentences, where, um, what are, where are the parts of speech, um, how, and then combining that into um, an abstraction that, that can be expressed in the, the snapshot article itself. Um, so this work was really about part of speech tagging. Um, we used a, a library that ranked sentences so that we could understand where those important sentences were or what, what the, the machine model understood as, as uh, important sentences. Uh, we primarily use the Python natural language toolkit. Again, the script, um, the script is there. Uh, if people are, are interested in seeing some of the code behind the scenes. Um, so as we we kind of we had this idea of a minimal viable expression, uh, what what is what could a snapshot be? We had the machine processes, and then we were going to unite it with that schema.org markup for an HTML expression of the article itself so that it could be indexed and found and read. Um, so and, and in this case, we looked at two particular formats. Um, I mentioned the scholarly article schema.org markup earlier, but there's also news article markup. And either one of these, as you move to summarization, the abstractive summarization that we pulled out, um, probably could be marked up in, in both or, or either or. <clears throat> So that's, again, that's an expression of this is just uh, kind of behind the scenes of what, how we would connect the, the expression of that schema vocabulary with the actual text sources in the snapshot. Um, and our, this was our overall goal. Two to three sentence summary, a readability score of around 60, which is about high school level, and then a something that that snapshot article that was um, re-envisioned in HTML and a, a highly optimized HTML that could be found uh, by commercial search engines. <clears throat> and so it was a matter of moving, you can kind of see this, I'm gonna let, it, uh, let you just call your attention to the sort of opening sentences of this intro, um, which is not, uh, is using the language of the domain as it would. Um, the idea was to move from this expression of the article to that idea of a snapshot. And the summary here is where you're getting the, the sort of movement um, in readability and an abstraction of, of pages, you know, nine to 10 or nine to 12 pages of an art, a science article moved into a summary readable for a wide audience. <clears throat> um, we also were able to maintain some of the domain language in the important sentences based on what the, the model would give us. Uh, and then we could prioritize um, keywords, keywords that it was finding um, that were um, part of the narrative uh, and, and ide identified as essential keywords. So what this led to was uh, obviously um, forms of, as. Layla was talking at the top, but accessible research, um, really hitting at translation of those concepts, that kind of last mile of, of research understanding, um, and then also connecting it to ways that we, we, we think, um, you know, places where our users are, findable research. Of course, there were challenges and opportunities, there always are. Um, the data sources for the articles, um, that was something uh, I, I think I said at some point, uh, it was, you know, I had this kind of Bill Murray Groundhog Day moment, if people understand that metaphor, it's man caught in it in a loop of days. Um, I always feel like when we come to these text mining uh, projects, the first problem is is always the, the uh, normalization of the data and finding good text sources. Um, so that there was that, that was no different here. Um, but we were able to, to get a, a small a set of, of data for social science, humanities, and um, STEM articles. Uh, the other challenge I think that we, we still need to sort of pull on and understand is what, how good is this model really working? Um, the summarizations came out pretty well. Um, I would like that to, to my um, 
non-specialist eye and, and, and knowledge of the domain. Um, but I would I would like to confirm, I, kind of re rework the uh, the the review of the summarizations to the scholars themselves. Um, we we still again this, these are the questions like a, another conversation with the scholars about what what are these you know is this model performing um, and then uh, also maybe find ways to adjust the reading levels like if we wanted to dial it back up to um, places where maybe it's at a high school level but we so we don't lose if we lose too much in moving it to a, a, a level of a, at a certain uh, those are all the and I think this exciting where this go and where it's going. Um, I think also opportunities. There's new partnerships. We, as we piloted this with uh, scholars, research uh, journal articles, I think there are there are more and more ways we could help uh, reach out to our new research our news and how this model could be applied, um, at helping them abstract some of their, their research news. Um, I also think that the news writers are people who are particularly suited to help understand and, and create better summarizations. So that's a, a, that's a, that's a partnership that we'll, we'll move forward with here. Um, I think there's also some work to be done on how do you surface the snapshot article, um, make sure it has the referral to the original research and understand the impact and reach of the snapshot article itself. So I, I do this a lot. I'm not meant for these Zoom screens. I, I'm a kinetic speaker. <laughs> uh, so uh, those those were uh, kind of the, the, the details of the model and the goals of the, the snapshot. Layla is gonna take us through the, um, the kind of overall picture of research implication. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, so we're, um, I'm just going to reiterate that we're, we're hoping to position the library as a partner in the research process. Next slide. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's a, it's a, a recurring theme that we're looking um, to make sure that the library continues to be integrated into the research enterprise, even as that changes at a, a really fast speed. Um, it changes very quickly and, and we want to make sure that we're keeping up and we, we develop new services that are uh, innovative um, and useful. Um, we uh, will do some more work uh, understanding how and why scholars summarize their work um, and figuring out how we can make this more efficient and useful. Um, and then the overall goal of all of that is to create interdisciplinary communication um, that's more effective, that that allows research to to innovate, to allows people to do what they're hoping to do, and to collaborate across disciplines and um, you know even within disciplines um, in in new ways that produce scholarship that will change the world. You know, uh, it's a lofty goal and also a very attainable goal, I believe. Um, Next slide. So um, we we hope to be a part of the conversation of scholarship, and we hope to act as translators within that conversation uh, to facilitate conversations that may be happening already, but we can help accelerate and improve um, to add visibility and discoverability to research, um, so that we can have the the most full impact um, possible and and benefit our own research and and the world. You know, we're a land grant university, and that uh, is that's our mission. And so, helping helping that um, through uh, the production of of snapshot articles and optimized summaries um, is a is a goal that that we feel pretty strongly in. Um, next slide. We would be happy to talk about this uh, further. Uh, please uh, contact us or um, you know check out uh, the survey information and uh, and everything on our 
on our GitHub uh, to understand what we're doing more. Um, and uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you.